Welcome to Crew Life at Sea podcast. Here, we will share the skills you need to make your experience and adventure out at sea a success. Hear inspiring stories from experienced crew from all diversities. Gain knowledge and know your rights. Be part of the crew, Life at Sea, and let's welcome your host, Raymond Crystal. Hello and welcome to Crew Life at Sea, the only place where you can find useful information, advice, insights and resources to help inspire you to take that next step in working on a cruise ship. Today I have a guest who is all the way from the West Indies, right? You're my first guest I've ever had from the West Indies. Me and him have a bit of an issue when it comes to cricket. He thinks his cricket team is better than my cricket team. But in reality, you know, they always get beaten. Of course, beaten. the West Indies is best. <laughs> well, back in the days, not now. Back in the day with Brian Lara, but yeah. he's toast. You know, he's an old man now sitting on his TV just chilling, right? Yeah, <laughs> just enjoying it now. So tell me, um, James, um, how long have you been at sea? And what made you decide to work at sea? Well, I've been at sea for five years now. I got inspired through my brother. He was the one that went at sea first and I thought uh, he encouraged me to do it. I thought it would be fun working alongside my brother at sea, share room, same cabin mate. But when I got the job, he left. Oh, no. he resigned. <laughs> so he left me alone at sea and uh, being able to travel the world, see different countries every single day meet new crew members, learn different culture, it inspired me to stay. Wow, man. So he, he, what was his job when he was hired? What he was, was he a doing? sweet attendant. Sweet well. attendant. Yeah. And he was working how long at sea? He only did one contract. And he didn't even uh, stay with you a little bit longer. He wanted to stay on land. He, he just wanted yeah, to go. He, eh? he don't like the sea. I don't know why, but for me, it's good. Older, younger? He's older, two years. Older. But he wanted to settle down in um, Curaçao. He lives in Curaçao. Ah, a beautiful place. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Oh, well, that's interesting. So he left eh? me alone, and then I found new friends and new, <laughs> what to say, new life <laughs> at sea. So let me ask you, uh, some people may not know, or some people may not. What does a, a housekeeping utility actually do on board? Well, they're in charge for like... Um, taking care of all the crew area it depends on your um, job description your responsibilities based on when you sign on mm -hmm. if you're in the public area or you're in the crew area ah. there has a difference so if you're in the public area then you take care of all the public areas depends on your assignments uh, you have different tasks different sections different parts probably you have the theater to take care of you just maintain and ensure that everything is clean and mm -hmm. speak and span there yeah yeah but then if you assign to the crew, to area, the crew then you same likewise same as how you do for the okay, guest area you do for the crew area how but many crew cabins do they give up one person it all depends because different officers uh, require a different amount of um, different time to do the crew cabin like for example a junior officer is only one time per week okay so one crew housekeeping utility can have uh, approximately 21 cabins what but 21 not 21 he has to clean every day yeah but 21 okay so it's over a time yeah, period it's over in a week period so what so how many in, in a day he has to in clean a day average? maybe 10 10 daily yeah wow that's uh, and do you have any uh, issues with crew ever uh sometimes it's a little bit difficult to communicate because yeah. of the different language barriers uh. and um we're at sea it's international I have like 30 different nationalities working on board wow. so everybody has a little bit difference with the English and pronunciation of words so sometimes it's a little bit difficult but mm -hmm. as long as you get it out there they will realize ah it's a joke oh yeah good yeah or well, like they like can I have some sop but yeah. me know you, you think that it's rude but me know they just that's the way they that's are that's how they, you know? it's the English you know yeah so don't get too offended <laughs> so tell me a, a daily schedule and how you manage your work hours and your free time how does it work well I'm always an early riser ah good because I'm always looking forward to the new port I'm in the new country waking up in a different country oh man this is <laughs> it's amazing, amazing eh? you don't have to pay for this man can you imagine so once i get up you start early always start your day early you always get inspired to do and to get through your day as long as you have the motivation that's it i love it very good um but uh, what is the how many hours a day do you work plus nine, minus nine Nine hours roughly. Nine hours, yeah. and you got about how much off? You do you work. Actually? You work first. You work the first. Um, you don't go over six hours consecutive. Ah, you six hours below. split. Yeah. 
rest and then you go to rest and then you come back and you work another three and a half oh, in okay. the evening and that's it okay so uh, what made you decide that this was the career that you wanted in your life or how did you get to this jo- this kind of a job well i like challenges well you know, you've got a lot of challenges this with is this. very challenging yeah. and it's adventurous and if you love adventures this is the place to be yeah every day is something new every day <laughs> can you tell me the process if somebody wanted to work on board as a housekeeping utility how would they have to go through it well first they will have to it depends on their country okay. depends on uh, what are the requirements from their agency or their country at first you has to you have to get some sort of um maritime background like probably go through the first aid just basic first aid training okay get that issued certificate from your place Mm -hmm. and then you go to the online the website of the company you like and you choose and then you write to them you send them your resume Mm -hmm. and then you see from there if they like what you have on your resume you fit the profile then yeah they will contact you yeah, so you got to go to www.crewlifeatsea.com and yes. everything is all under online applications and online agencies i've taken everything that you need and it's all under one umbrella and you just click and it'll redirect it to where you want when you need to look for those sites so i've made that very very easy for everybody so back to the crew cabins because this is interesting uh do you have any arrangements with tips or anything with the crew? Do they ever give tips or how does it work? Yeah, it depends. Yeah? yeah they, they have services very nice. They always, oh, it's good. The tips, the money is good. The salary is good. Sometimes you don't even have to touch your salary. Wow. Tips is taking care of everything. Shucks. Uh, you know, some of the crew really are generous. Believe me. You cannot imagine. Okay, I'm going to come and follow you and I'm going to start checking your pockets. I'm going to start helping you <laughs> help you carry that heavy weight. <laughs> you know, once in um, my previous company, I took home $10,000. That's just tips. This is so motivating for people out there. No, I'll I'm tell you. you. When I got home, I bought my first car. What car? Uh, Toyota. Wow. Well, in my place, it's a uh, Toyota, no, mostly Toyota. What color? A white. White, uh, yeah. Awesome. I wanted a cherry red, but it didn't have to settle yeah. for the white. It's yeah, okay. So <laughs> no, <laughs> that'll do. Not Can you problem. imagine? That was just tip. Wow, so you must have really enjoyed it. Eh? Yeah, man. It was amazing. Yeah, man. That's I that's the good thing with working at sea. There's yeah. lots of opportunity and, and you, you can make the money. And you can save. Wow. Yeah, you don't have to pay electricity. Yeah. You don't have to buy food. You don't have to do anything. Just, just work. work. <laughs> wake up, work, sleep, eat. Wake up, work, sleep, eat. <laughs> so if you know, if, when it comes to the guests... How do you handle when they are ha- unhappy? Have you had guests? Uh, oh, lots of times. Okay, what do you do when you have a guest that's like... Rah, 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 rah. You just smile. <laughs> you just have to I've smile. I've heard that before. Just you smile. just have to smile. That's the first thing. You, first impression is always the best. Yeah. And you have to make it on the first impression. No matter how rude they are, no matter if they don't talk much or whatever, just smile and greet them. That's it. Eventually, during the course of the day, they will get out of their moodiness and they will realize, no matter how much shit I give to this guy, he still smiles. You see, these are the tricks that we yeah, need to Yeah, and learn. they will come around back. Believe me, I've had endless of encounters yeah. like this. You see, you've learned a trick. A I've had guests away. complain of like every single thing, but still, you just smile and you just give them that good personality and they come around. Awesome, man. I love it. I'm going to try that sometime with normal people. <laughs> Believe me, man, it works. So um, what happens if, for example, you have a guest or a crew, or many guests, I presume, that falsely accuse you of taking or misplacing something that was somewhere, or I don't know, something like that. How does that happen? Well, firstly, as long as, uh, first step, once they say they misplace something, they told to us, we told them, okay, no problem. We informed our superiors. Then the superiors go and speak to the guests directly. Would you like to make a formal complaint? There's procedures oh. for it. They go to the guest relation. They make the formal complaint. Security will come with the managers and stuff, and they will search the guest cabin first, do a proper thorough check. Maybe the guest misplaced it. It fell under the bed or something. Yeah. And then if it cannot be located, Straight then of course the guest, the guest is... is, is um, insisting that uh, you took it you took it so then they will go to your cabin along with you they will search your cabin of course with your permission Mm -hmm. of course it's not there so two days after the guest ah I found my uh, thing you know like this like this (laughs) or it's lost outside or it's lost somewhere on the ship they find it they return it to guest relation lost and found they always get it back then they go through all that nonsense for nothing crew always know there's one thing on ship don't take what's not yours of course that's the first flight I I was straight away (laughs) 
Um, a lot of cleaning is done, I've noticed, with uh, you guys. How? What is the process of cleaning? Because I know you have some type of rules and regulations, and they're always checking everything. No, the main thing is that uh, it's a ship. It's okay. a confined area. It's um, it's easily to get sick in terms of um, norovirus, yes, I've, which I've, is I've famous at sea. But um, that's why we do all the time sanitizing, sanitizing. That's the most important thing. You just sanitize. You just clean when it's necessary mm -hmm. and everything will be okay it's no hard thing to it it's just if you don't like to work then c is not for you yeah if you you've got to learn to work home. come on yeah you've got to work <laughs> yeah i see you walking around with these little buckets with like six or seven different color sprays yeah they have different uh, different chemicals for different cleaning purposes okay like for the bathroom they have a special chemical for the glass they have the glass cleaner Air and these are powerful. Eh? Yes, they are. You got it on land? You don't get it on land like no, this, like a consumer. No, it's land. The, you have everything up to date on the ship. It's like you the, have all the tools, man. Jeez, I think I must take some of these chemicals. How am I going to take them? We put them in little <laughs> juice bottles. <laughs> oh, this is my juice. <laughs> so you vacuum, you clean, you wash, you wipe, you do linen, you change the, the, the linens, you dust, you clean the floors, you clean the walls, you polish. Did I leave anything else out? Might sound like a lot, but at the end of the day, once you know what you're doing, don't work hard, you work smart. Have you worked out? Yeah, that's all right. Have you worked out a system, a smart way? Like, do you start? First time, of course. Of course, you're a first timer. You, you feel just it. Like, <laughs> you feel it. Yeah. You finish late. You cannot finish in time. But then after you start to adopt your own technique and then you start to get going and then you realize, hey, you're finishing faster than the time and you're doing more than what you used to do before. Because you've learned a little yeah, technique. Yeah, What's course. your technique? <laughs> I will not yourself. say that one. Yeah. Okay, cool. So <laughs> he's got his own technique, and I guess it's uh, going to be kept with him. I can't force That's him. That's my little secret. Maybe I'll choke him out later, and I'll get at the truth from him. Nah, I'm just kidding, bro. Okay, let me see. What else can I ask you that would be interest the guests? How, what happens, for example, when you don't have a vacuum or you can't find something, and time is running out? Like something breaks, or what happens if you're in a, in a bad situation? There's always a backup system. Always, eh? There's always a backup system. You have you have your colleagues, you have your teammates. They're always there for you. You always have to work as a team. Yeah. No matter what. I know this. I just wanted to get the people to understand. So if you had no vacuum, or let's say you had like two or three cabins still to do, and you had like 20, 30 minutes, obviously they would call three or four other guys who are not doing anything and say, hey, you go to this guy's cabin yes, and there is do whatever he says. There is always backup. It's so always teamwork at sea. On invocation day, you're always the busiest. Do you guys have helpers or you do it on your own? Yes, they do. We do have helpers. Um, not all the time they can help us because if they have like um, heavy loading or whatever, they're delegated to other duties on that day because it's the busiest day for everybody. Yeah. It's a long day. But we tend to manage. Some people on other ships and bigger ships, they have helpers. They actually give them extra money and they help yes, them. Yes, we do, do also here. We also do here, but it all depends if they, like they're I said, if they're busy, okay. then we kind of do, we can manage. Hmm. It's just that we always offer, everybody has to live. Yeah. Everybody ha has to earn a bread. <laughs> everybody has to have a piece of the bread. You cannot be greedy. Even me? <laughs> <laughs> How stressful is it? If you have like so many cabins and many duties to do, can you do you manage it? Do you stress out or do you just? No, like I said, you have to find your own rhythm in working and you have to build that to yourself and then you will see it's not stressful. Okay, so first week when you sign on, yeah, yeah probably like you will be running like a chicken, yeah. you know. <laughs> but after that, you settle in, you gotta adapt. <laughs> so, what is your most challenging part of the job? The most challenging part for me, yeah is um, when I have um, a guess who's not so happy. Oh gosh. And there's always that one person who's always uh, in the mood or something, don't speak much. But like I said, all I do is just smile and greet. I go my way and that's it. Must be terrible. Eh, but it always that. eats you up inside to know what they're thinking. What will they write of you? What will they say? Yeah. Will they complain of something? But at the end of the day, you just smile. You just put out your best. And that's it. Yeah, I must say, I've, I've experienced from people before, they told me, like, sometimes they'd have three or four guests, for example, they were so good to them and so nice to them. And at the end, they, they were the ones who wrote the bad comments. There's always like that also. Huh? That's what they I'm saying. So it's false. always, you can never tell what's happening. It's but unbelievable, man. 
you just gotta hope and pray for the best ah, you just do your best and what it is what it is and that's it you know you smile but there's happy, always like job. i said if you have a guest like that there's always your managers who's always there to support you and stuff like this so you have a problem the from the first the instance you tell to your manager so they already know that should at the end of it become a major issue mm -hmm. your manager was already informed of it so they know what to do yeah. so you won't feel the squeeze yeah so I'll take these tips guys really important Tell me a little bit about opportunities and promotions in this job. How does it work and in what... Uh, well, uh, on the cruise ships, they always hire from within. Um, in terms of, um, let's say you come as a uh, housekeeping utility. You do your first contract on good behavior. Mm -hmm. No bad behavior, no written warnings, no nothing like this. You apply for a promotion, let's say as a suite attendant. Talk to your manager. They approve of it. You do a cross training. Uh, for a period of time and then within the next contract you can come back as a suite attendant that's how fast it works wow that's really interesting because they always employ from within mm -hmm. okay yeah that's very nice to know eh? so there's always opportunity living on board out at sea can be kind of tough you know as you know how is your accommodation space and what are your benefits well so far my accommodation space has been great for my five years at sea i've never encountered any problem any roommate we always work things out we always communicate talk to each other live nicely we become family yeah you have to be like family on board so but if you have a problem with a crew member you can always change cabins right yes you can always change you can always go to the hr you can request and yeah. say like this like this for this reason for this purposes or mm. whatever it but is uh, they always try to fix it i remember on some ships they don't allow you to change a certain Mm, uh, areas you only allow to change with certain departments but i don't know uh, that was you know, different company different, different companies rules different and rules and yeah that's yeah. what i thought you know but uh, it all depends <coughs> but for example um i work with companies before like if all the indonesians they want to stay in one section yeah. they allow them to stay in one section yeah, so they're good. good because the indonesians they like to sit outside at night and meditate and yeah, have they their own conversation happy, happy. so it's better like that yeah, it's they it's have the good. companies they try to yeah some companies they let even guys yeah. and girls yeah. stay together which is really good so knowing what you know now if you could change one thing in your life what would it be and why from why, the ship. why I didn't start earlier? Because <laughs> now maybe I'll be captain. <laughs> well, you never know, bro. If you were captain, I would be up there with you, <laughs> sitting there <laughs> to telling you about cricket. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you to get us a game of cricket. You know, if I wait for you, I wait for yeah, ten forever, years. Yeah, maybe. But believe me, man, I can play some good cricket. Yeah, that's what they say. You know, but when we're on the field and the balls coming at you hundred miles man, per I'm hour, I'm Caribbean, man. I know, bro. <laughs> I'm just trying. The <laughs> sun is nothing for me, man. <laughs> I'm from South Africa. It's the same. Uh, do you prefer batting or fielding? Batting. Yeah, of course. Everyone wants to be a batter. No, but I'm an all rounder basically. Oh, I mean, I'd love to play a game, but we should get a game going when I this even uh, want a wicked keeper. Gee. Wow. Okay, so this guy's gonna beat me. Let me move on before I get no, a bit I, of a I, whitewash. I, I took some. Um, I took some bowling uh, techniques from your guys in South Africa. You know, oh. Sean Pollock. Yeah. yeah you're TV. watching the TV and practicing of course in your I cabin. go and practice no <laughs> <laughs> hey hold on catch my ball or bounce it off the walls yeah, yeah. our walls of metal on yeah, board yeah these guys are good man <laughs> alright back to the interview <laughs> so one of your toughest days that you've ever ever experienced tell me how what happened and how you got through it you must embarkation day embarkation day it's always the toughest yeah it's uh, the most busiest day and the most longest day for us sometimes things don't go the way you want but you just have to pick yourself up and just mm. man up to it, the make most the most day of it, sweat. and get it done. Because at the end of the day, the day will end. <laughs> it will end eventually. And it will get done. And it will get done. No matter what. Believe me, the ship will sail. <laughs> <laughs> the only way it sails if you fail USBH, but we always pass in that. You know, that's just the, the way it works. Have you worked on big and small ships, right? Yeah, I worked on Do the you big feel ships. that there's any of a difference? Um, small ships, it's very nice. It's easy to maneuver. It's easy to move around. Mm -hmm. Big ships, it's uh, a little bit challenging, but it's still okay. Yeah. Lots and lots of crew members. Lots of other, you know. Lots of activities. Yes. Lots of things to do. Special activities. Very special activities. We all know what that is. Variety to choose from. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about the negatives <laughs> and the positives of your job. Just little bits of them that they can understand. Of the job itself or of working at sea? Well, the job, more, more or less the job, the positive and the negatives. Uh, the positive, there is uh, always rooms for uh, improvement. There is always rooms for promotion. That's really To move good. up the ladder. Um, negative, I don't really see any negative at this point in time where, from where I stand. Mm -hmm. 
But if you have a bad boss, you're in trouble. <laughs> well, you just have to know the work around it. Work around it. Eh? No matter where you go in this world, they will always have the good and the bad. I like your attitude, James. You just have you, to. You know your stuff, bro. That's you just have to just <laughs> suck it in and eh? just do it. That's <laughs> okay. it. Okay. So, I have a big question that I ask all my interviewers. It's the big question. Tell me the most shocking thing you have ever encountered or seen in your career at sea. Can be anything. Oh, wonderful. I will never forget this story. Good. It was in Malta 2013. Okay. I think it was a musician, singer and his girlfriend. No, my apologies. The girl was a singer. The guy was an um, officer in the bridge. Okay. So they went out in Malta having a nice time. Forgot to check what time the ship is sailing. So there goes the horn blowing. And in Malta, where the ship's dock, you have like this little ramp that you have to come down, you yeah. know, to go down to the bottom because Malta, everything is high, yeah? So this ship blowing and they're holding hands, coming down, walking. <laughs> the girl in the heel, no? And the guy, they're just walking. They didn't, they didn't pay attention to what's They're so in love, man. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, when they just get a glance of the ship, the ship is just leaving the pier, just pulling out from the pier like this. Of course, the gangway is still open for the security because the pilot and whatever, yeah. no? And this guy saw, this guy saw this um, ship moving, and this guy just lose this girl hand and start to run to the ship. He left his girl and ran. For Shit! The ship. She took off the shoe and she started to run behind, but of course she cannot catch him. <laughs> and security, safety officer, and all the bosun, they're standing at the gangway. They're just looking as the ship just move away from the pier, and they're telling him, "Don't do it." They're showing him, "Don't do it." This guy jumped from the pier into this gangway of the ship. <laughs> Jump! My God, this ship. We yeah. sail in anyway. He the girl had to stay there yeah. and take the port agent had to arrange flight for her to catch the ship on the next port. And they, and they he got both got fired, right? No. Not. No? They got warning. Oh, final come warning. Come on. Jeez, that is so crazy. So in reality, some companies, that's an immediate dismissal. Yeah, that's an immediate dismissal. Immediate, especially even if you jump in from the pier into the... But he was from the bridge, so... Yeah, so that's, you know... Okay. Yeah. It's connections. Uh. Yes. That's a really good story, bro. You always have to know somebody yeah. to know somebody. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You gotta know somebody who knows. I somebody. learned one very good point. Mm -hmm. Very first time I started work on ship, and this was from a training and development manager on board. Okay. She was an American lady. She told me, "You want to make it in this company at sea? Always let your name be known." Yeah, that's it, bro. That's a good one, eh? That whenever they see any piece of paper on the desk. Yeah. Of the captain or any officer and they see your name they must who's this james what does he do do we know this guy where, where does he work no they must not be like that they must ah james yeah. ah yeah okay yeah let's do it yeah, good. that's it your name it's a powerful thing eh? so has uh, being at sea changed your life yeah so far yeah yeah in a good way yeah okay. i've learned a lot uh, uh, you've been at sea for five years yeah. why do you keep coming back like Jack Sparrow it's a pirate's <laughs> life for me man <laughs> Arr, uh, would you recommend somebody to work on a cruise ship yeah if you're up for challenges and adventures then go ahead okay so let me ask you your favorite port and why Barcelona and that's where we're going soon and that's where I go home I love the excitement it's a lovely place. That yeah. one street, it's yeah, called uh, La, Las, La, Las, Las Ramblas. Las Ramblas. Yes. Yeah, you walk that down one, there. And there's people amazing. are doing these funny mannequin things. Yeah, and it's, like it's it's just it's beautiful there, man. I just love yeah. Barcelona. And then you can go to Camp Nou, where the famous football stadium. Oh yeah, I haven't. Here yeah. you go. You're a football fan, also. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, Big time. man. Well, is there anything else that you'd like to leave us and end um, us off with? Well, I would like to say that um, crew life at sea is making it easy for everyone thank you bro to get a chance to work at sea yeah i really want people to know the where they stand no now it's becoming very easy with uh, crew life at sea because before it's a little bit difficult but now with crew life at sea you can really get connected excellent man thank you so much for your time james you're welcome man be ready because the cricket match is coming <laughs> we're gonna do it man <laughs> and thank you very much for being on the show god bless Appreciate you well it, james thank, thank you, you. Thanks for listening to Crew Life at C.